Okay, thumbnail first. No, that stinks. What about this? Hey guys, Omar here. My Mac Studio arrived today and I'm really excited. I haven't even unboxed it yet. See, see, it's totally sealed. But um, I just wanna let you know that I'm not a tech YouTuber or a computer expert. I just wanna talk about which configuration I picked as a working photographer and also as a YouTube content creator. So for starters, let me tell you what I'm coming from. You know what I'm coming from? The little wheel, uh, rainbow wheel of death. That's what's been going on. <laughs> My 5K Mac back here is a 2017 Mac. And I thought that I kind of maxed it out back in the day. And it's a five-year-old computer, which I kind of think is the lifespan of computers. But this Mac back here is a 2017 Mac. It has 4.2 gigahertz quad-core Intel i7, which I remember at the time was like the better one. I think you can choose the i5 or the i... I went with the i7. I thought it would last me 10 years. <laughs> Stupid. I also remember getting the least amount of memory, but then over time having to upgrade the memory myself. So it started maybe with eight gigabytes or 16 or something but it had four slots and I maxed it out. I actually have 64 gigabytes of memory in this computer and um, it has a Radon Pro 580, hold on, I can't see. Radon Pro 588 gigabytes and um, yeah. So, and then the main thing is the memory. So the memory in there, which I'll talk about in this video, the memory on this computer is one terabyte I think it's like a dual sort of hard drive, half SSD, half, you know, hard drive or something. So which Mac Studio did I go with? So I wanted to kind of future proof this machine, but I didn't want to get the, oh, that's nice. Oh, hey. I've uh, purposely have not watched any unboxing so that I can enjoy this, you know, by myself, but with you. Okay, so there's a box and you open it up and you get this little flappity flap flap, which is uh, usual books and stuff. Any stickers in here? Oh, welcome to the Mac Studio. So you get like the usual nice little Apple guide and wow, look at that nice sticker there. Branding people. And I guess you, oh, it tells you what to do. It tells you what, the... oh! Oh, it's just like, you know, it just goes like this. And then you're ready to go. Now, I actually skipped the Mac Mini. I was so close to buying a Mac Mini M1 because of everyone's reports about how fast that computer was. My computer has slowed down so much that I have to keep closing windows. I have to keep trashing big <laughs> files to sort of speed up the computer. But if I, have, if I have too many windows open, I start to get the crazy rainbow wheel of death. Oh, it's nice to see that the power cord is not permanently attached like the studio display. And by the way, little spoiler, I don't have a, I don't have a display yet. So uh, those of you that know about displays, I'm not getting the studio display pretty much because of the um, price. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Anything else in here? Okay, unboxing presentation is beautiful. Everything is really, Nicely protected and I love it. Okay, so my first choice was to whether to go with the Ultra or the M1 and I just went with the base model. I just went with the M1 completely not based on any evidence except everyone that said the M1 MacBook Pro and that the M1 uh, Mini was just blazing fast. I knew anything I got was going to be way faster than this 2017 uh, 5K iMac. So that's why I went with the base, which starts at 199. <laughs> 199, imagine, yo. 1,999. Um, and I kind of knew that uh, just by looking at everything, just by looking at those amazing Apple graphs that the M1 Max, is that what it's called? The M1 Mega Johnson? <laughs> oh, okay, mine is the M1 Max, got it. Uh, the M1 Ultra, which is the higher level one, I just completely stayed away from that. That starts at $4,000. And I knew that that was probably for superpower users making Pixar movies. <laughs> so 
So I knew as a photography, and I only do 4K video, that I'm pretty sure the M1 Max is gonna be enough. So what did I upgrade? I did upgrade some things on there, and some of them might be controversial. Let me unwrap this while I talk. Ooh, ooh, I rip. Once you rip it, you can't return it. Yeah, I guess you can, but. So mine came, oh, very nice. Wow, it's very cool looking. Very cool looking. They should have come in different colors. That would have been neat. It's still cold from the UPS truck. <laughs> so uh, I like the design. I wish it was a little smaller. I really loved the Mac Mini design, like just this tiny little guy that everyone said was really quiet. The fans wouldn't come on. But maybe this guy's just a little bit more, a little more powerful, and so they needed that, you know, that thermal cooling on the back. So I don't mind it being kind of, I mean, this is the whole computer here. Okay, so the first choice I had to do was if I wanted 24 core, which is the base model, or for $200 do 34 core. And I just stuck to the base model because everything I saw about the M1 Max is the thing is fast enough for what I do. Photography, 4K video, shouldn't be a problem. So I just stuck with the base model there. My next decision was unified memory, 32 gigabytes or 64. And that one was a $400 upgrade. And I was kind of like, hmm, I probably should stick to 32 because the base model of this is not, they're not the same. This 64 gigabyte wouldn't be the same as this 64, which is what I have in the super slow wheel of death mama back there. But I decided to maybe future proof a little. And so I went with the 64 uh, just to kind of protect myself a little bit with the wheel of death that I'll be getting in the year 2028. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. And the big one, uh, it's a little controversial, but internal memory, the base model has 512. That just isn't enough. If you do video content and if you do photography, if you go with the 512, you have to have an array of hard drives. And I do. This guy has one terabyte of, of uh, internal storage, which I kind of just use for, you know, running. It, it's 70% it's full in the five years, okay? They just fill up these hard drives. So that's one terabyte. And then I have all these four terabyte drives here that fill up, <laughs> you know, because they have video, they have 4K video, they have um, tons of photographs from clients, many years. So I had to decide. I definitely wasn't doing 512. Should I do one terabyte again? And I know if I copy this stuff to this computer, it's just gonna be like almost full already. So the, I bit the bullet and I actually upgraded to a four terabyte, four terabyte, which was $1,200, which is completely, could be a little controversial because you could just put a, a external hard drive on here. But here's the thing. You gotta always know what your bottleneck is. And to me, the bottleneck is always the hard drive what is you know the computer is accessing files to look at and i want to use this computer a little differently i actually want to use have a folder structure that has the you know the material i'm working on either the photographs or the video files are going to be on the machine and then my external hard drives are going to be back you know the backups of those things so i feel that i can work on this computer and then also it's portable. So if I need to bring my portfolio with me or I need to show clients uh, my work or if I need to work somewhere, I can actually, the computer has the materials on it. Of course, I always have a backup. I have a Synology which backs up and I back up to the cloud. But I think for my workflow and for my business, I want it to have a lot of storage on it. And of course, it's not gonna be, I put everything on there and just say that's where it lives. It's just a workflow thing. I wanna move away from just relying on filling up hard drive after hard drive. So I need your help now. I need an external monitor. I'm not getting the studio. Uh, some people say that 4K monitors aren't great with this computer. I'm thinking of a nice ultra wide that's like a little wider than this. Um, could be curved. They're also uh, ViewSonic, BenQ, Dell, uh, you know, LG. They all make Asus, <laughs> they all make monitors. And um, should I get a photo editing monitor? Should I get a widescreen monitor? What do you think is best for this workspace here? Okay, and I'm not getting that Mac Studio, I'm telling you. 
Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me as I talk through my computer choices as a non-computer person. All right, I'll see you guys next time.